Ladies and gentlemen, these are my favourite videos. The ones where I have an excuse to have a drink. Unfortunately, I decided to record this on a Monday. Meaning, I don't have any wine. I, I literally, I, I mean, I could have bought some, but that's just going down a bad path. So, unfortunately for this one, we're just going to have to pretend I've got wine in my hand. Now, when it comes to drinking wine, I could have a sip of a glass of wine and then tell you it has a full-bodied zesty taste with an oaky afterburn. But I'd probably be lying to you because I have no idea what I'm talking about, much like many wine experts. Hello! Welcome to Brain Spill, the laziest show on the internet. My name is Tank, and today we're talking about the world of wine tasting. In particular, the, um experts we have on board to tell us what's good and what's bad. Now, it's safe to say that the average man or woman that drinks a glass of wine has a grasp of the basics and can tell the difference from some surface level factors such as the colour, taste and whatnot. But a lot of people rely on the opinion of an expert to help inform them of what wine tastes good and what wine does not. Which is particularly strange because if you get given a McDonald's cheeseburger and a gourmet burger from a high-end restaurant, you can probably tell the difference and probably choose which one's better. However, with wine, a lot of people rely on these experts to tell them what's what. The reason behind this, however, is that there is just so many different wines you can choose from. So many different choices and varieties that you may need to rely on someone that actually knows what they're talking about to give you an indication as to what you should maybe drink. Because at the end of the day, we don't have enough time in our days or enough liver function to have tasted every single bottle of wine to know what's good or what's bad. Unless you're a middle-aged housewife who drinks half a bottle a day, mind you. It often seems like wine experts can send dozens of aromas and at least a couple of tastes in each glass they drink. Unlike me, when I drink a glass of wine, I can just tell if it's red or white. So, when an expert says one bottle is expensive and luxurious, and another is a cheap brand of wine, do we just accept this on facts? Well, that depends. An expert is based on their experience, and of course, this doesn't mean that someone who has drank wine for years can't give some insight into it. But when they start pulling words out of their ass about the taste elements and subtle refined parts of the wine itself, the bullshit radar starts going off. So, why do people think this? Well, science has tried to explain why some people are able to pick up very subtle differences in wine and why some people are not able to do so. And as part of that science, a number of experiments have been carried out to try and determine whether this is actually something that can be measured and is real, or whether it's just a load of baloney. In 2001, Frederick Bourget, a then PhD candidate, conducted an experiment where wine tasters were invited to a wine tasting session given two different wines, one white and one red. All they had to do was taste the wine and describe the wine they tasted. Seems pretty straightforward, right? After the first wine tasting, they identified herb and floral aromas in the white wine and the red fruity aromas in the red wine. Standard stuff. A week later, the experiment was repeated. They all came back and they were given a further two glasses of wine, one red and one white and they were asked to do the exact same thing, to drink the wine and rate it. However, the difference with this test was that the wines they'd been given were actually the exact same bottle of wine, except one of them had been dyed red, so as a matter of fact, they were actually both white wine, the exact same wine. All that was different was the color. However, the particularly strange thing about this was that the participants after drinking the wine on the second occasion gave very similar results to the first time they drank the wine. So it really seems that the participants had decided on the flavors based on the color alone of the wine. The hypothesis of the experiment being that wine snobs don't know what they're talking about, which at the end of this study actually seems to be quite true. This concluded the fact that the wine's color provides significant sensory information which misleads subjects and leads them to what wine they think it is rather than what it actually is. I mean, at the end of the day, wine is basically just fermented grapes and it's just crushed down and sold in various bottles. So, I mean, a lot of people might not be able to tell the difference if it's all pretty much just grapes, alcoholic grapes. As a matter of fact, you get some bottles that are so expensive, it does make you question what's in that bottle to justify such a high price tag, especially when a lot of people probably can't even tell a massive difference between them. 
Which means the bag of wine at the supermarket is not actually a bad deal. And if it was me, I'd highly recommend getting the bagged wine. Although, come to think of it, bottom shelf wine might not be the best. Maybe spend a little bit more just to make sure you're not getting the absolute bottom of the barrel wine there is. I should know, New Year's was not a great time for me. So I guess it's okay provided that your wine doesn't taste like bison piss. How do you become a wine tasting expert? Do you have to drink so many different wines around the world to become a wine expert? Is there a wine tasting test? Do you just proclaim that you're an expert in the field? Well, I found a quote online and it says this about developing a taste for wine. Taste engineering is a strategy of action to move towards connoisseurship, defined as the fine-grained discriminative faculty to judge and express taste according to the aesthetic principles of consumption domain. Through the lens of practice theory, connoisseurship is the mastery of particular understandings, rules and engagements implicated in a practice, a goal that requires both the cultivation of the sensorium and the use of the specific linguistic register. Well, I hope you understood what they said, because I certainly did not. And to put it in simple terms, basically, drink a shitload of wine until you know what's what. Now, something to bear in mind about the study that I previously talked about was that the results of this are quite controversial, and many people actually discredit this study for them using the rather underhanded tactics to try and disprove that wine tasters are just making it all up. It's a little bit more complicated, but the principle still stands. I just don't think I could ever actually become a professional wine taster, mainly because I don't have the patience or the expanded vocabulary to be able to pull up all these different words to try and describe what I'm drinking. I'll take a sip and go, yep, that tastes like wine, that, and I like wine. And that would be pretty much the extent of my expertise in the area. Especially what some people do where they have the wine poured to test the viscosity and then they've got to give it a sniff and then they take a little sip and then spit it back out. All of this stuff, no, 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 you're just doing it wrong. You need to basically just swill it and chug it and then drink it. That's like the best way to do it. I mean, if you're drinking it not to actually drink it, then what's the point? <laughs> I don't think you need a wine expert to tell you that. So I think the reality of this is that at the end of the day, experience does help. You know, someone that's drank wine for a long time can certainly give you a good insight into maybe stuff that is good and they can give you some recommendations. However, some of the more refined details that they sometimes come out with isn't probably all to be taken on face value. And at the end of the day, we're only human. There's so many factors involved with this that might sway our judgment or opinion on something that you can't always take everything for 100% solid truth. And really, when it comes down to tasting something, it's more so down to personal opinion than listening to what somebody else is going to tell you. So if someone says to you that the wine you're drinking is bad, then maybe you should think about it yourself before taking everything they say on face value. So I just thought I'd say that before the wine connoisseurs pick up the pitchforks and come for me. So guys, just <laughs> chill out, okay? Just take a glass of wine and enjoy yourself. If you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe. If you want to be notified as soon as I upload my next video, be sure to hit the bell button. And if you've got any ideas for what topics you'd like me to discuss next, let me know down in the comments below. As always, sources used in the video will be in the description. Right, uh, next time I promise I will actually get some wine because if I'm going to bring a prop on, I want to make sure I can actually do something with it. In particular, when it's a video I can have a drink on, so, you know, really I'm kind of disappointed in myself. But, next time, don't you worry about a thing. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.